Hello and welcome to this demonstration for ArtCam Express 2011. What I'm going to be showing you within this demonstration is how to create a piece using multiple pieces of clip art that are already installed within ArtCam Express. So here you can see what I'm going to be doing. This is a three dimensional PDF and here you can see I've created a shield and built this up just using pieces from the clip art library within ArtCam Express and I'm going to be doing some machining on there and doing some V-bit carving. So if I just open up ArtCam Express if you take a look on the right hand side where it says modules you will see there are no modules installed so this is the basic ArtCam Express which is £99 or €125 Euros or $149 so no modules installed this is all, all just with the basic ArtCam Express so I'm going to create a new model it's going to be 600 millimeters by 600 millimeters and I'm not too fussed about the thickness at the moment because I'm going to delete the material anyway. So I'm just going to click OK, make sure that my datum is in the center and then just click OK. So that's created my sheet for me which is 600 millimeters squared. Right, so if I click here, this is the Relief Clip Art Library and I'll just scroll down through that. There are over 500 reliefs available to ArtCam Express so this is in the basic ArtCam Express we have over 500 reliefs in there things from animals let's say for instance to sign bases, crests, crosses we also have greenery so there's lots and lots and lots of different clip arts within there for you to use within your designs with ArtCam Express so what I'm going to do is to select the sh shield 2 and that will open up the preview for me within the 2D view I'm just going to center that and just make that a little bit smaller like so I can change the height in Z if I wished let's say make that 50 millimeters and apply that and I'm going to change that to add I'll explain the add and all of these meanings in a little while so I'll just paste that in and then close my dialog box if I go to the 3D view you can see that's pasted my shield on top of the plane so what I'm going to do is just delete this material as I don't need it at the moment so if I go to toolpaths and delete material then you can see it's deleted the material for me if I go to the 2D view what I'm going to do is click this button to preview the relief and that shows me the relief within the 2D view. This is important for me at the moment because I need to place things within each section of this shield. So what I'm going to do is I'll just zoom in just a touch and I'm going to use this phoenix to start and I'll just centre that. It's quite small at the moment so I'm going to make that a little bit larger like so and then just move that to the top right. Now I'm going to click add for this as I want this to be added onto the top of the shield. If I was to click merge highest what that will do it would actually merge the part with the shield and being as though the shield is 50 millimeters high and the phoenix is only 9.5 millimeters high you wouldn't actually be able to see the phoenix so I need to click add and that will just add that onto the top of the shield so if I click paste and close the dialog box go back to the 3D view zoom in just a touch and you can see that's added my phoenix onto the top left of this shield Go back to the 2D view, do the same thing then for the other three items on each section of the shield. So what I'm going to do is click Lion here and I'll centre that again and just make this a little bit larger again. Say like so and then move that to the bottom right of the shield. Again click Add and then paste that in. Go into the 3D view so you can see that. 
that's added the lion there back to the 2D view and I'm going to choose a cross this time so I'll click on cross and center that again again going to make this a little bit larger so it fits my desired piece move that to the bottom left to let's say there now at the moment that's a little bit high uh, I know when I paste that in on top of there it's going to leave the cross standing proud quite a lot so change the mode to add and this time I'm going to change the scale in Z to 2 so I'll paste that close the dialog box go to the 3D view now you can see that's added the cross quite nicely do the same thing for the crown so I'll choose this crown here and I'm going to just make that a little bit larger again move that to the top right let's say there and I'm just going to change the scale of this as well let's say about four millimeters and apply that again I want this to be added and then paste go to the 3D view and now you can see our shield starting to take form all that I need to do now is to add the scroll to the bottom of the shield and also create the text so if we go to the 2D view and I'll just zoom in on the bottom bit here for a moment if I come up to banners and I'm going to use this scroll here if I just center that in the page again and I'm going to make this a little bit larger because it's quite small at the moment to around about there and then I'm just going to drag that down to about there so there you can see that that's in the right position now what I want to do is to use highest as the combine mode I don't want to add this because if I added it it would add the scroll but then it would also add this shield onto the top of the scroll which would not give the desired effect that I wanted I want to combine this as highest because I want the scroll and the shield to merge into each other so if I paste that now close the dialog box and go to the 3D view there you can see that it's merged the scroll on top of the shield if I just rotate around there you can see the back of the scroll so that's merged quite nicely so I'm going to go back to the 2D view turn off my preview and I'm going to close the relief clip art library I'm going to create an arc this is just going to be quite rough really and just move that upwards to around about there this is just so I can create the text around there just so it's continuing along the scroll so I'm going to create some text I'm going to use engraver 60 high and just create the text here call that Barnford and then select that and I'm going to shift select the arc that I created if I left click over the text button and keep it pressed down I get a flyout menu and here you can see I have wrapped text around a curve so there you can see that's wrapping the text around that arc so I can move that around if I wish I can do all sorts of edits with this text let's say for instance if I wanted it to be a little bit higher I could just move that upwards so I can move it down specify a distance I can also change the way that it's actually positioned I can change the alignment of that so I could say for instance stretch to fit the curve line to curve I can move a whole sentence I can move single words and I can also move single letters so if you take a look here the A seems to be closer to the R than it is to the B so I'm going to move that back just a touch like so so you can just move single letters if you wished move that back and that one let's say like that and then just OK that so my text is in the right position now what I want to do is to create a rectangle around that so if I create the rectangle Round right about there let's say 
and what I'm going to do is click here I'm just going to show you how easy it is to edit the vectors so I'm just going to grab that midpoint there and move it upwards do the same with this midpoint and then if I right click on the nodes I have a few options I want to smooth the node do the same with this one as well so there you can see it creates a nice smooth curve I've not done editing this yet what I want to do is just move the bottom node there inwards and move that one inwards and then I'm going to move these two downwards it creates a nice little effect so there you can see it's created quite a nice little effect there for the text so if we go back to the 3D view I'm now ready to machine this part so if I click here which is where the toolpaths are located you can see all of the toolpaths available to Arkham Express I'm going to click on three dimensional toolpaths uh, create a machine relief toolpath I'm just going to tab that onto the project just so it creates a little bit more space I can do the area to machine can be the whole relief or selected vectors for instance if I wanted to create a boundary I'm going to do this over the whole relief the finishing options I'm going to use a 6mm ball nose cutter and the roughing a 20mm end mill and I'm going to set up my material the material Z0 is going to be the top and I'm going to add a little bit onto this thickness as I don't want the cutter to cut through the base so I'll click OK and then you can see that set up my material block if I now click calculate now this will work out the toolpath for me so that's the roughing toolpath and then the finishing toolpath if I close the machine relief and I click on this light bulb here I can turn off the toolpaths in red I can open this tree up if I wished so for instance if I just wanted to show the roughing which is the 20 millimeter end mill I can just turn that on I could just turn on the finishing if I wished so you can toggle on and off the toolpaths uh, being shown within the 3d view so I'm going to right click on the machine relief and click simulate toolpath so this is doing the roughing cut and then it's showing you the simulation for the finishing that's giving me the simulation for the machine relief now what I want to do is to cut out this part here using an area clearance so it creates a pocket just so it creates a flat surface for me to create the v-bit carving for the text so if I click area clearance and if you just keep an eye down here just below project and 2d area clearance it will give three values down here if you keep an eye on the z value as I hover over the part you can see the minimum depth is around 16.5 and the maximum is about 24 let's say so the start depth I'll give that a start depth of 16 millimeters and the finish depth let's say 24.5 just to be on the safe side and I'm going to add a tool for this 6 millimeter m mil this will give it some nice radius to corners and then click calculate if I right click on the area clear and then simulate toolpath it will give me a simulation of that so there you can see it's given me quite a nice little pocket there and that's left me with a flat surface to create my v-bit carving so I'm going to do some v-bit carving now turn on the vectors now as you can see it's showing the pocket preview for the toolpaths uh, I'll just turn those off and then select the text for the V-bit carving and the start depth again keep an eye on the Z value in the bottom right corner as I hover over as you recall I set the depth to 24.5 for the area clearance so my start depth for this 
the bit carving is going to be 24.5 millimeters. Carving tool that I'm going to use, I need to use quite a small tool for this because if I use a large V bit for this, what this will do, it will gauge into the side walls of my pocket. So I'm going to use a small 6 millimeter V bit. I can click here if I want to work out the maximum depth or width of cut. If I wish to add a roughing tool to this, let's say for instance I had some absolutely huge letters, I wouldn't necessarily want to use a 6mm V-bit to rough out all of these letters. I want to blast away a lot of the material using the largest cutter that I've got and then just leave enough material on so I can just finish it off using the 6mm V-bit. So it's quite a useful tool if you're doing some large letters. So I'm going to click calculate now and then I'm going to simulate the V-bit carving. So there you can see that's created the carving for me. So if I just zoom out, here you can see my finished piece. So what I want to do now is to send this to my customer for approval. So the way that I can do that is to click on simulation and I can change the material if I wished. Let's say for instance I wanted green wax could change it to that colour, uh, mahogany, could change it to that. I'm going to change it to medium oak, like so, quite like the look of that. And if I come to window and then save 3D view image, and I'll just save that onto my desktop, and this will save a 3D PDF for me. So if I go onto my desktop and double click the PDF, you'll see I get a three dimensional PDF that the customer can take a look at and he can do any alterations or tell you about any alterations before you actually machine the part. So it's quite a useful little tool. So there I have the 3D PDF, it can be rotated or zoomed in and out and also change the colour and the lighting. So I'll go back onto ArtCam. I'm now going to show you how to generate the G code for this so you can send it to your machine. So if we click on toolpaths and then click here to save toolpaths. Here we have the save toolpaths dialog box. If I had a tool changer I'd just move all of these tools over onto the right hand side and then select my posts from the list. If I didn't have a tool changer, select the particular toolpath that I wish to post. Move that onto the right hand side. So here we have my machine relief roughing toolpath. And then I can select my post from over 300 posts that we have available to Arcam Express. We also have a generic G code post so if none of these posts run your machine you may have some luck using the generic G code. You can also access these using the demonstration version so if you just download the trial and you try out the tutorials you can actually post these to your machine and try this out before you actually purchase Arkham Express. So I'm going to use a Mac free and I'm just going to save that onto my desktop as number one and then close my dialog box and then go onto my desktop open up the G code and there you can see the G code ready to be sent to my machine 